This video is intended for API developers and architects looking to leverage GraphQL API capabilities for efficient and flexible data fetching. If you are interested in enhancing your Kubernetes native API development experience, this video is for you. Let us explore how to achieve these improvements using WSO2 APK. Hello everyone and welcome to the screencast session on Kubernetes native API management, GraphQL support with WSO2 API platform on Kubernetes. We will be talking about the benefits of GraphQL APIs over traditional REST APIs and how you can effectively deploy and manage GraphQL APIs on WSO2 APK. My name is Gayangi Seniviratna and I am a software engineer at WSO2. I will be your host for this session. Let me start by giving a small introduction to WSO2 APK. APK stands for API Platform for Kubernetes and it is a Kubernetes native API management platform that assists in developing, deploying, and overseeing APIs in a Kubernetes environment. The latest APK version, which is version 1.1.0, introduces the new feature of comprehensive GraphQL support, which is what we will be exploring in detail in this screencast. Traditional REST APIs can sometimes lead to inefficiencies, such as overfetching or underfetching data. GraphQL addresses these issues by providing a more flexible and efficient approach to data fetching and manipulation, so that API developers and consumers can have a smoother experience. There are several key benefits of using GraphQL APIs over REST APIs, which I will elaborate on in the following slides. In this screencast, let's consider two versions of a patient information API. This API is simple. It gets various information regarding patients at a medical center, like name, age, appointment information, and the various doctors they have appointments with. I'll walk you through several scenarios where we retrieve the same information using both REST and GraphQL APIs. You'll see how GraphQL outperforms REST, especially when dealing with data that has complex relationships and structures. So now let's move on to talking about the benefits of GraphQL APIs. So the first benefit I will talk about is the greater flexibility in terms of data interaction. Let's consider a possible scenario in our patient information app. Say we have to get the doctor contact information for a specific patient's closest appointment. For a REST API, we have to use two GET calls. First, get their latest appointment using a GET call and then get the doctor ID from that response. Then you use that ID to get the doctor's contact information. Since a REST API call is limited to a predefined endpoint, you can't get more or less information than has already been defined in that endpoint. Now let's look at the same scenario for a GraphQL API. Here, we can simply obtain all this information in one query by taking advantage of nested queries, where you can get the doctor name and then their contact information in the same query. So here we have all the required information that we obtained before, except we only needed one HTTP call. So unlike REST APIs, where clients usually need to make multiple requests to different endpoints to fetch related data, here in GraphQL APIs, you can use a single query with a nested data structure. And like I mentioned before, in REST APIs, since you are restricted to a predefined endpoint, you get a limited amount of information. But in GraphQL, since the information you get is based on the query you send in your request, you can adjust the query as needed and get the information that you require. Now let's look at how GraphQL allows for simplified data fetching. With GraphQL, you can make a single query to retrieve all needed data, unlike REST APIs where you might need multiple calls. This reduces the complexity and makes your code simpler and more readable. If data requirements change, you can easily modify the GraphQL query without changing the server-side API. This flexibility and ease of maintenance makes GraphQL very appealing. Earlier, as you saw in the REST API, you needed two GET calls one for the patient's latest appointment and another for the doctor's contact information. This involves handling two endpoint calls and managing their responses. In GraphQL, you could get all this information in one query. If you need more data later, you simply modify the query 
not the server side API or business logic. Additionally, since GraphQL allows clients to request only the specific data they need, it reduces the amount of data transferred over the network, leading to increased efficiency. Consider a scenario in a patient application where you have to get the names and the contact information of all patients. In the REST API scenario, when you try to get all the patient information, this is what you get, but you only need this and this. The rest of this information is unnecessary, but since you get it, you will have to filter that response to get the actual information you require. In the GraphQL API, you just directly get the data you require when you adjust the query to get the exact information. This simplifies the response handling code and also minimizes the data transferred. So now let's look at the key benefits of managing GraphQL APIs on APK. Unified API management is a key benefit where you can manage GraphQL APIs alongside REST APIs on APK so you can have simple, consistent API management in a single platform. Another benefit is that you can declare your GraphQL APIs declaratively with YAML configurations like any other Kubernetes CRD, which grants not only consistency and version control, but also makes collaboration easier. In terms of security for GraphQL APIs, you can take advantage of the security and authentication features already in place for REST APIs, like authentication via OAuth through mutual SSL and etc. Uh, integrated observability and monitoring is another advantage. Since APK allows you to seamlessly integrate with observability tools like Prometheus, Grafana, and Jaeger, this enables comprehensive monitoring, logging, and tracing of your GraphQL queries, which gives you better insights and makes troubleshooting much more effective. Lastly, automation and GitOps integration provides the ability to implement GitOps practices and automate the deployment and management of your GraphQL APIs. This lets you manage almost all aspects of your GraphQL API lifecycles through Git-based workflows. So now I will go through a small demonstration of GraphQL APIs deployed on APK. I will first install the APK, then deploy the backend for our GraphQL API. Then we will deploy the same patient information API we used as an example in the earlier scenarios in two ways. First, using the APK conf file, and then with Kubernetes custom resources. So now let's go to the demonstration. I will first install APK version 110 into a namespace called APK. Then after adding and updating the Helm repo, I will install the Helm chart. This installation will take a while. Then we will be able to view the pods using a kubectl get pods command. You will notice that the pods are in the creation state. After a while, you will notice that they all are in the running state. This is the GraphQL schema for the patient information API that I mentioned earlier. This also has the Kubernetes deployment files that I will be using in this demo. I will be using the GraphQL faker tool along with my custom patient information schema as the backend for this demo. You can find all these files in this GitHub repository. So let's first create this backend using the kubectl apply command and then you can view the pods and see when it spins up. I will use minikube tunnel to access my deployment locally. Now we can proceed with deploying the API. We will first deploy the API using the apk conf file which can be generated from the GraphQL schema with this command. Now that I have generated this, I will paste it in a separate file and fill in the missing details like the name, the base path, the version of the API, and also the endpoint configuration. Since I will be using the GraphQL Faker service for my GraphQL backend, this is the URL of that service. Now let's generate an authentication token that we will use to deploy the API. This is the command that you use to deploy the API using the apk conf file. I will add the authentication token that I generated earlier into the request and then I will point it to my apk conf file and I can do the deployment. Once you run this command, the API will have been deployed. You can use a kubectl get APIs command and you will be able to see the API that you just created. 
Now let's invoke and try out our newly deployed API. I will be using this command along with the authentication token generated similar to earlier and I will invoke this API. So now you will be able to see that the API was invoked successfully and we got the response from the backend. Now we will generate the Kubernetes custom resources for this API using this APK conf file and the GraphQL schema and then create the API using those custom resources. First I will use this command to generate the custom resources using the APK conf and the schema. Then this will create a zip file. This zip file contains the YAML files corresponding to the various custom resources needed to deploy the API. Here you will see these YAML files and then I will be able to create the API using a kubectl apply command. So now that the YAML files have been applied, I can use a kubectl get APIs command as earlier and I will be able to view my newly created API. Then, similar to earlier, I will generate an authentication token which I can use to invoke the API. Then I will use this command to invoke the API. It is the same command that I used earlier. Here you will see the response from the backend, which means we have successfully deployed and invoked our API. So to conclude this screencast, let's recap the key benefits of using GraphQL APIs. Greater flexibility since GraphQL lets you request exactly the data you need without overfetching or underfetching. Simplified data fetching since you can retrieve all related data in a single request and therefore reduce complexity in data retrieval and increased efficiency by minimizing network usage and speeding up response times. WSO2 APK allows you to fully leverage these benefits by providing a Kubernetes native API management platform that integrates seamlessly with GraphQL. With WSO2 APK, you get unified, scalable, and secure management of your GraphQL APIs using Kubernetes strengths in declarative configuration, observability, and automation. Overall, APK not only enhances the natural advantages GraphQL has, but also allows you to use the power of Kubernetes for your API management. For more information on APK and its GraphQL capabilities, please refer to our documentation and our GitHub page. We encourage you to try out this new feature and experience the capabilities of GraphQL support of WSO2 APK today.